Someone who's had a remarkable level of consistency when it comes to video games is James Bond, Agent 007, of Her Majesty's Secret Service, the international man of mystery. No way, that was Austin Powers and his track record is, it's bad. It really feels like the James Bond character has appeared in more quality video games than not. From the infinitely replayable GoldenEye 64 to the arcade cover shooter fun of Bloodstone, I've yet to find a James Bond game that was anything less than average, though usually even better than average. But being a license, James Bond games can be quite difficult to get re-released. Most games are tangled up in a ball of potential rights holders, and all it takes is one to have an issue for the whole thing to backfire. There's talks of GoldenEye 64 coming to Nintendo Switch Online and Xbox Series via Game Pass. Given how hard the Xbox Live Arcade port fell from a rights perspective, I find that hard to believe. And yet, this is the timeline we find ourselves in. I understand the desire to rip it off when you see a James Bond game from years gone by, but what if I told you? There's a James Bond game you can get right now for just two shiny round pounds, and better yet, it's one of the best entries in the James Bond video game franchise? I'm going to show you a James Bond game that is so damn fine you won't be able to resist its charm. Easy to find, cheap to procure, and an utterly fantastic game all round. This is 007 From Russia With Love, released for the PlayStation 2, PlayStation Portable, Microsoft Xbox and Nintendo GameCube in 2005. Oh yeah, we've gone back a generation this episode. It is a reimagined take on the classic James Bond film of the same name, which hit cinemas like a freight train back in 1963. This thrilling spy movie has been adapted to focus a little bit more on the action, and features new voice work from the late Sean Connery, reprising his role some 40 years later. The game also features the voice talent and likeness of Natasha Benningfield, for some reason. I mean, she was all over the charts at the time, and I was all over her too. But I think it's best we don't declare my single status, and the rest should be unwritten. From Russia With Love features some elements inspired by later James Bond films to serve as a love letter to this era of James Bond, the Connery era, taking cues from both Thunderball and Goldfinger to pad the game out into a longer package. The game was developed by EA Redwood Studios, who would later go on to become Visceral Games. They continued to make licensed games for EA, including the much-revered The Simpsons game. But this would be their last James Bond game, as EA would lose the rights soon after. No expense was spared in bringing Sean Connery-era James Bond to consoles. With a script penned by Bruce Fairstein, a writer involved with penning 2005's Everything or Nothing, regarded the best James Bond game by many, as well as film scripts for GoldenEye, Tomorrow Never Dies, and The World Is Not Enough. With Fairstein in control of the story, every care was taken to ensure the game world would carry that James Bond feel. But the game's script isn't without some controversy. With the name Spectre in legal limbo at the time, thanks to the anal rentativity of the late Kevin McClory, once again the Spectre organization would have to be renamed to avoid spurious ownership claims. As a result, Spectre was renamed to Octopus throughout the game. Had the game come out a few years later, it would have been free of such legal shackles and could have been released without this edit. 
and an aged Sean Connery playing a man much younger didn't help with the dialogue either. You go save your friends, take the boat. And you? I'll find my own way out after I get those blueprints. So, further accolades for this fantastic game. Christopher Lennertz, a man who had only just started cutting his teeth as a composer, delivered a score that oozed in the 1960s espionage feeling of classic James Bond films. His previous video game work had been for three of the Medal of Honor titles, but he would go on to produce music for beloved games, such as Mass Effect 3 and, aforementioned, The Simpsons game. Sure, from a gameplay perspective, this title wasn't anything specifically unique. But its large outdoor environments and seamless switching from driving to on foot was really quite impressive for 2005, squeezing the very best it could out of the consoles from the time. up on Dolphin, I could easily be mistaken for thinking From Russia With Love was an Xbox 360 launch title. Its environments are dense and detailed, its gameplay smooth and consistent, satisfying and on point. The story is as follows. Jim Bond must travel to Istanbul, not Constantinople, to recover the Lecter, a cipher used to translate coded messages transmitted by the Russians, from a Russian spy who seeks to defect. It's not all plain sailing, as in Bond fashion one double cross leads to another, each ending in a more thrilling standoff than the last. I've never seen this film in full. But from what I understand, the core overarching story is the same, even if the major action sequences are embellished and padded out for the sake of gameplay. Assuming the role of Bond, you have access to weapons and tools in order to defeat your enemies. You have a lock-on that turns the game from a challenge into a cakewalk, and you have your Bond Focus, which is an extra step to the auto-aim which allows you to disarm an enemy or perhaps shoot a grenade off their belt. These kills reward you with points that you can spend on unlockable videos, concept art and multiplayer characters. Each of the 15 story missions features a handful of different gameplay types, whether it be stealthily shooting enemies, flying a jetpack around or perhaps driving around dealing with an absurd number of cars. Seriously, destroy 30? That seems pretty excessive. There is plenty of variety, but the game can get dull after a while. Thankfully, its short length makes up for this, clocking in at around 7 hours. The Q gadgets are nice, but mostly underutilized. The Q copter in particular is great fun, with many tunnels to explore in order to progress through trickier levels and find hidden collectibles. Gas masks offer you a temporary level of protection against gas-filled areas, and bonus ammo types allow you to deal quick damage on tougher foes. These gadgets can be upgraded, as can your weapons, which goes some way to mitigate the threat posed by wave after wave of generic, unchanging enemies. The environments are about on par with the previous title, Everything or Nothing, despite the game using a different graphical engine. A lot of the core design language seems to be the same, with similar gameplay elements serving to dictate the layout of the environment. However, unlike Everything or Nothing, which would feature a large number of smaller stages, From Russia With Love chooses to make its stages generally a much larger affair. The boss fights are a tad uninspired, and in truth the game finds itself struggling to engage me at times, but as of now, the game is still dirt cheap second hand. Normally there would be a need to take part in the nitty gritty conversation, the talk about piracy, but I'm not really so sure we need to this time. Oh, alright then, for you guys, anything. Today you will find a second hand copy of From Russia With Love for £12 and under at sex, depending on platform. The GameCube version sells for £12, the Xbox version for £3, and the PS2 version for just £2. Or the PSP version, a fairly impressive conversion to the handheld, will set you back just £3. I get the feeling these prices may climb as retro games become more valuable. 
But at this time, From Russia With Love will not break the bank, even though eBay prices can be slightly higher because their eBay prices do keep that in mind. As for whether you should rip it off, well, how expensive is too expensive? It's true, the game is cheap, but during that era of gaming certainly, with few titles even featuring online play of any sort, and without achievements or other external factors, it's even harder to justify owning a game when you're a few clicks away from a direct download. It is true that owning this game physically doesn't provide any benefit over piracy, but it's not like we're dealing with greedy sellers this time around. The prices on sex are certainly respectable for this curious little licensed game, so it simply boils down to whether you see the need to own the game physically or not. Either way, I've got to recommend you play From Russia With Love, at least once through. It's got an undeniable draw in the form of classic Sean Connery, and with him the classic Bond motifs, and excellent, though repetitive gameplay. We won't see a new Bond game until IO Interactive, makers of Hitman, show us what their upcoming Project Bond is all about. If you're looking for a game to play while waiting for Project Bond, I suggest giving From Russia With Love a go, through whichever means best suit you. By my best guesses, we only have a few weeks before GoldenEye 007 hits Nintendo Switch Online and Xbox Game Pass, so maybe slot From Russia With Love into your play schedule now to get yourself into the mood. Whether you're a pirate or just a collector, thanks for stopping by.